Anybody interested in coming, PantherFest 2023 will be Saturday, July 22nd, beginning at 2 p.m. Central Time until 5 p.m. at the location that's shown on the screen. Like last year, everyone who attends will have a chance to vote for the Panther car they think is worthy of Best in Show title. The winner will receive a Best in Show trophy along with a $500 cash prize. This year's event will be hosted at the North American Lyman Training Center. So please be respectful. That means no burnouts and no sliding. All in every Panther car is welcome. From Mercury's to P71's, from lifted off-road Vicks to whatever the hell this is. Whether it's on 22's or 26's, slammed or anywhere in between, if it's a Panther car, I want to see it there. This year, there will be a special appearance by the Burnout Cafe Cuban Food Truck. Come eat some Cuban food while you hang out with fellow Panther car owners. And who knows, maybe you will take home that $500 Best in Show prize. All that and more at this year's Panther Fest 2023. See you there. Starting this list off with the Universal Crown Vic Nightmare Fuel, and that is Intake Manifold Anxiety. Anyone and everyone who's ever owned a Crown Vic at one point or another has experienced this. The infamous Intake Manifold Failure. Whether you're planning a long trip and have to constantly check your coolant reservoir levels, to having to replace spark plug number seven, once every two weeks to doing the old coolant sniff test every time you park your car. Intake anxiety has been the cause of many sleepless nights for many a Crown Vic owners. All right, now for this next one, I feel like older gen BMW owners can relate, and that's the smell. There's literally no other words to describe it. It's a scent that's unique to an old P71. Anyone who's ever sat on the driver's seat or the back seat of these cars for that matter will know exactly what I'm talking about. The closest thing I can compare it to is that it smells like an old book or like the inside of a 1950s classic car. And no, the smell does not go away even after fully gutting the inside of your Crown Vic. This next one, by far, is one of my favorite things about owning one of these cars. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the phenomenon simply known as the Crown Vic Effect. To simplify an overcomplicated subject, the Crown Vic Effect is when you're driving down the highway, minding your own business, and cars in front of you start moving out of the way to what can only be described as Moses parting the Red Sea. People don't realize is that at one point, this car made up 80% of patrol vehicles on the road. The Crown Vic's body design is hands down the most quote unquote car looking car ever made. The car's distinctive shape and colors made it instantly recognizable to motorists. And the fact this car is still being used by departments 12 years after being discontinued means that boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, and now Gen Zers have a reason to fear this car when encountering it in the wild. Oh yeah, next up, a lot of you are guilty of this, including myself, and that is the bullet phase. I myself have been guilty of doing this for the past 15 years. Don't lie, at one point or another, you've either rocked bullet rims or at the very least, heavily considered it. And you know what? I don't blame you. It's by far one of the most timeless designs ever made for a rim. And when combined with these cars, it gives them what I feel to be the perfect ratio of elegance and sportiness that can only be pulled off on a Crown Vic. Then there's the two valve rumble. Just like an RB26 or a 2JZ, the Ford 2-valve V8 produces a very unique sound that many say no other V8 even comes close to beating till this day. You know what? Hell, for this one, just have a listen for yourself. 
Next up, we have a very controversial topic, and that's the whacker phase. Some of you might not admit it, either because your egos are too big or for fear of being ridiculed, but at one point or another, when buying an old cop car, we all go through the whacker phase. Whether it's playing with the spotlights and equipment that the cars came with, or decking your car out with enough light or decking your car out with enough lights that it can be spotted by an astronaut in the orbit, we've either been guilty of doing it or, at the very least, thought of doing it. Thankfully, most of us move past the whacker phase, while some of us relapse like the junkies we are. Next up is the, quote, I'm not a whacker, unquote, phase. Following the guilt that comes with the whacker phase, most of us go to an extreme not to be associated with being a whacker. Look how different I can be. In most cases, modifying our VIX to such an extreme that the cars completely lose their identities and become something entirely different. Then, following this phase is the this car is fast as fuck phase. The people who fall into this category are either really young or it's their first time buying a Vic and fall for the old quote unquote cop chip sales pitch. They brag about how their 4,000 pound sedan is just a four door Mustang until they get beat by a 10,000 pound pickup truck that brings your ass back to reality. Next up we have the heavy modification phase. For some of us, losing to a fully loaded Honda Odyssey minivan can be a traumatic experience. So we go to great lengths to make sure we beat said minivans, at least by a fender next time. Whether that means upgrading your intake and exhaust systems, to fully gutting your car or even getting a custom dyno tune, those going through the heavy modifications phase go to great lengths to make their Chromevix just as fast as a stock SN95 Mustang GT. <laughs> then there's the last phase, acceptance. It's when you come to realize you drive an almost 20 year old, overweight, underpowered cop car. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. You accept and enjoy your car for what it is. It's a blank canvas for you to express who you are. And no other car in the world can achieve that other than the old Crown Vic.